we got to get it done. we got to get it done. And it'll never be perfect. And it's okay. It'll never be perfect. Ever. Hey, everybody. My name is Georgia Reed. You're watching Ballerina Badass. And today, I am making a video based off of a request from one of you. Thank you so much. I love requested videos. <laughs> Before we get into it, be sure to like comment, subscribe, hit the ding ding button, whatever you need to do. So uh, the request was to um, help with some tips and tricks for performing the dying swan. I performed the dying swan the last time was in 2016. You can find the video, uh, the link is below in the description box. I just did it for a studio performance. I have also performed the dying swan uh, in a bunch of different locations. I know I did it in St. Louis at the Jewel Box, which was really cool. Here's what we're gonna cover in this video. We'll just do a brief review of the history of the Dying Swan. We'll talk a little bit about potential requirements for you if you're going to do this solo yourself. We'll look at some inspiration. We'll talk a little bit about your, you know, pulling from your own personal story and your own life. And then finally, just a couple of things about technique and uh, some tips for that. So if you're going to perform this solo, right? The first thing I think, I think it's always good to know, you know, what's the background. This ballet premiered, uh, this ballet, so first of all, I think you should know, uh, a lot of people wonder, hey, is the dying swan the same as Swan Lake? No, it is not. Is the dying swan ever performed in Swan Lake? Ah, even though it is not part of the original choreography, there are some ballerinas who apparently will throw this solo in there uh, because they want to. And if you look at the history of ballet, it is fascinating how many times <laughs> Prima ballerinas are like, well, I want to take this solo from this ballet and I want to put it over there in that ballet. It's a whole thing. And uh, when you get to that level of diva and uh, your director and people are willing to bow to your demands or whatever, you do it. So keep that in mind. What else? Uh, this was first presented in Russia in 1905. Uh, it was created by, I'm going to say these names wrong, Michael Fokine on Anna Pavlova, right? She was the original dancer. And it, she came to him saying, hey, I'd like you to create a solo on me. She was inspired by her walks in the park, uh, watching the swans, and also reading a beautiful poem by Alfred Tennyson. This poem is called A Dying Swan. No, yeah, it's called The Dying Swan. I'm doing great. I'm reading it up here. So it goes, the plain was grassy, wild and bare, wide, wild, and open to the air, which had built up everywhere an under roof of doleful gray with an inner voice the river ran a down it floated a dying swan and loudly did lament it was the middle of the day ever the weary wind went on and took the reed tops as it went oh, poetry oh, i love it love it so these things inspired anna pavlova anna pavlova and uh Fokin decided hey why don't we use this fantastic piece of music uh, from, I'm going to say it again, probably wrong, Camille Cessin's The Carnival of the Animals musical suite. Beautiful piece of music. Pavlova performed this solo over 4,000 times. Holy cow. Uh, you're, we're going to get into a couple of different videos showing some of my favorite uh, performances of The Dying Swan. And then you will find your own. So, so that's just the brief history of The Dying Swan. So moving on to number two, I want to talk about requirements. So requirements. Something to think about if you're going to perform this solo. If you're just performing it for you, uh, number one, I believe this music is in the public domain. You want to double check this to make sure. And even if it is in the public domain, if you try to use a recording of the music for your own performance. Uh, if you're performing it live, you can probably get away with it, but if you're gonna put it up online, you gotta be mindful. Which recording are you using? And does BMI own it? Does Warner Brothers own it? And if so, you might get hit with a copyright uh, ding, right? So keep that in mind. Uh, but if you're doing a live performance and you have a cellist who is willing to play it for you, uh, that should be fine. Also, uh, are you performing this? Oops, sorry, there's gonna be airport plane noises. Are you performing this for yourself? Great. Are you performing this with a company or for a director? And if so, you're gonna to have to think about what they want. So when I performed this in 2016, I had a lot of notes from the director at the time at the studio and they made a lot of changes to my solo that you know they wanted. And so you do that because it's their performance, it's their show. Okay, fine, if you wanna argue it, politics, baby. 
So there's things like that to think about, which version, the solos that you're gonna see today in my video, you'll see there's a lot of similarities, but there are also some key differences in the choreography. And so that's going to be something you're gonna wanna think about, depending on what your director wants or doesn't want. Location. Where are you performing this piece? Think about the size of the stage. Think about the size of the audience. Think about the type of floor you're dancing on. Can you do this on point? Are you doing it on carpet? Are you doing it on a real dance floor? Uh, are you doing it on a raked stage? All of this is going to affect how you approach your choreography and um, how, how much you can travel, how much you can't travel. Uh, think about lights. If, are there going to be lights in your face? Uh, will that be an issue or not? Are you doing it during the day or are you doing it at night? Are you doing it in a dark theater or an open space? When I did it at the Jewel Box in St. Louis, it was a bright afternoon and it just gave it a different, um, a different flavor. It was really interesting. I really enjoyed that performance. I don't know, it, was, it was a little less dramatic, but it felt more personal. Inspiration. So one of my favorite books is called Steal Like an Artist. And I like it because we're not talking about copyright infringement here. We're talking about inspiration. And, you know, when you're looking at different people's performances, variations, things like that, it's great to watch them and take what you like and leave the rest, which is what you should be doing with this video that I'm making for you, by the way, frankly. You're going to take whatever you uh, think vibes with you, resonates with you from my video that I'm making here, and you're gonna use it. And anything that I say here on this video that you don't like or don't agree with, you leave it, you don't use it, that's fine. That's what it's all about in creating art. Uh, and even if you tried word for word to, you know, you're, again, you're not doing like an impression of another artist, you're inspired by that artist. If I get inspired by Natalia Osipova's performance and I take some things and try to emulate them from her performance, it's still not gonna look anything like hers. I'm not built like her, I'm not her. I can't ever be her, I do, I'm, her, I'm me. So let's take a look at some of these different performances of The Dying Swan, which I recorded the other day. Let's take a look. Okay, so here's the music. So the music is at a pretty good pace. Again, you want to think about which version of this music you want to use. Right, just turning on that. Beautiful long legs, long arms, right? And she is accentuating that. I mean, she is one of the quintessential Odette Odiles, right? Um, look at that. So she is a very sad swan, right? And I feel like there's an austerity to her approach. And you'll see here, she's not really stopping her movement at all, you guys. Every, something is continuously moving. I haven't seen her really stop yet. Beautiful. She seems to be searching for something. I like that a lot, right? And I've always really loved the quality of her head, her head movement, the way she, I mean, she has such a long neck. So again, this is a dancer who knows how to accentuate her best qualities. And you want to think about that. And again, that music. So she's like a little right leaning on those parts just below 90 degrees boom so she hit it but she didn't hold it for too long but she wanted to get into this moment those arms she's unfolding she's really unfurling and she looks she's got her eyes down which at least from my experience that really helps with her balance as we get this moment She's holding it. Oh, look at that long back. Beautiful. Beautiful. She kind of brushes away that water. And she's gotten up and moved right into this. Now the arm's getting more serious. Look at that. There's a hole. And she's still doing just a little bit, right? Keeping a little bit of movement. So I don't know if she ever really stopped it. Maybe that was a choice. Maybe she couldn't today. Maybe she's already done fucking 10 performances. I mean, this is a working ballerina who, good lord, I can't imagine. 
the days where you're just so tired and you keep going, which you can play into that, by the way. If you're having a day where you're tired, you can use that. So even there, she, she didn't quite get still, still. I would have liked that, but it doesn't matter. It's her. Look at that melting down, melting down. I mean, just everything about when I watch this dancer, I'm looking at the exquisite line and just who she is. And you can see that she just finishes every moment, right? She's just finishing the moment. And she's still, there's always this movement quality about her. And I feel like with Svetlana Zakharova, she would be the kind of dancer who gets on stage and with or without any emoting, you're going to enjoy the performance because her lines are so exquisite. She's just, I mean, she's built for this, you guys. So you can look at that if you have a similar physique to her uh, or technique. If you aren't built like her at all, you still might look at her arms and quality and some of that head movement to soften. If you feel you are a sharper dancer, you can try channeling your Svetlana, your Channel your inner Svetlana Zakharva. That could be an, a, a great opportunity. Okay, let's move on to. So let's check out uh, Ulina Lopatkina, all right, and see what she does. Now, for me, I've always loved. Ulina is one of my favorites because uh, I feel like she doesn't. Um, I feel like she doesn't. What's the word? Um, disqualify. No. She doesn't sacrifice her emotional quality for the technical quality. And again, technically, she is amazing. But still, I just feel she's just a little less perfect than Svetlana, which I feel makes her a little more accessible and human and believable for me. And I just feel her quality and watch her arms. Anyways, let's see what her musical and artistic choices are. So a similar tempo to Svetlana's. Ooh, that pullback. Beautiful, beautiful. Look at that. Much different arm quality than Svetlana, but I'm here for it. Look at that. Again, another kind of austere performance. I feel like she knows what's coming. The swan knows what's coming, but she's going to she's going to pass with grace. At this point, at least. Look at that quietness, and she holds it, but then moves again. That's I like that. So you're seeing here, you guys. There's no one way to dance this part. And look at her. Looks like she's looking down in the water herself. What's become of her? She's still beautiful. She's still viable. She still has life in her. But then again, she was just too tired to keep going. She makes me cry. I don't know why. Something about Alina. Look at this turn. Look at that. She still has some fight in her. Like, I really like that. I feel like she's not a victim. She, she hasn't made her... She, maybe she she hasn't... She's not ready to give up yet. Now, let me see. Watch this. Oh, beautiful. I know she falls out of it, but she has this beautiful moment where she really hits that. And then look at this. So again, thinking about that quality in the neck, you really want to have your neck and arms and embouchure, your embouchure, your quarter bra warmed up. Now let's see if she goes back as far as Svetlana. No, she doesn't. She doesn't do as big a back bend because that's not her thing, right? Svetlana's known for that big bendy back, not her. And she did, look at her, a little bit, look. Beautiful. Oh, oh. She has like a little deathy dying moment. Did you see that? Ah, uh, sharpness. She's not afraid to get sharp here, you guys. Oh, she got still for a second. See that? Different choice, different choice. Now it's getting to her. Look, she's, she's faltering. Bend back the head, beautiful. Oh, 
Oh, she's, she's really dropping. She's really getting to her. And you see those those feet. You've got to keep your feet strong so that if your upper body and your turnout, right, you're holding those thighs together. Look at this. Uh, in parts. In parts. Falling. Falling. It's like different parts of your body shutting down. Right? A little bit more dramatic there. And look, she's got that face at the end. And she's still looking. Oh, you guys. Oh, you guys. Much different choice, right? Much different choices, but so beautiful. Different. So what did you see in her performance that you loved? Take what you love from each performance. Leave the rest. You're going to be you. You're going to do it your way. You're going to get taking this and you're letting it seep into your body. Different things that are going to hit you a certain way and inspire your own performance. So now one of my absolute favorite ballet dancers is Maya Plisetskaya. Okay, so first thing you're going to notice is her music is much slower. Notice also she's wearing a long tooth, which if you're a dancer who maybe you're feeling self-conscious about your legs and you have the opportunity, you can choose to wear a longer tutu. You can go old school. It's about telling the story. Look at her eyes. Oh, I love her arm quality. She really, for her, it's much more of a rippling feeling, right? She's a strong dancer. She's not as, you know, live and skinny as those others. She's powerful. But I feel like it's just much more like this truly powerful swan. This is her stage. And some of this can only come with experience and legendary liveliness. She's a legend. Much quieter, right? And notice, notice the skirt, therefore, you're not, not seeing as much of these moving knees and things. And she's not afraid to get the look of that. that. Yeah. See those arms behind her? Yeah, she's leaning. Look at that. That's very pretty. Look at this one. This one has seen it all, y'all. So again, you notice. A lot of these dancers, some of them will do the backup arrays in parallel, some maybe in fifth. You can choose which one feels better, which one gives you. Do you want to move more? Do you want to move less? How do you want your legs? Because there's a combination of look and feel. I understand. Look at that. She like freaking fell out of that. God only knows how well she was when she did this performance. She's not concerned about it. Did you see that little bit of swan head movement that is so excellent oh did you see that she held that that was beautiful oh it was beautiful she's doing that similar arm thing like Svetlana did look at that and you'll see she doesn't have as much flexibility as Svetlana but it's still meaningful it works she's almost dipping her beak into the waters right she's in the lake beautiful back then again, again. She's, She's definitely, definitely going, going for it. it. Now remember also, that skirt is covered. She can bend that back knee a little bit more for support because she's not as concerned about a perfect long leg line with the skirt covering it. So that's something to think about if you're doing this performance. What's going to make you look at your best? Again, this is this moment. This is that last moment of, I'm not, I'm not ready to go yet. <laughs> that head change. Birds do that, you know? They do that little bit of change when that last moment of strength. Feeling it, just the air on her wings, the air through her feathers. Not afraid to not look absolutely perfect. Again. Oh, you can pull that a good place to spot and let that head go a bit like that, y'all. Just let the shoulders go a bit. Look at that. She's getting the tremors. Oh. Is she looking for God? Is she looking for God? Is she passing with her eyes?
This is Natalia Osipova. Okay, Osipova, Osipova. I never said. I know. I know. So for Natalia, Natalia Osipova, she is a powerful and expressive and surprising dancer. She, I feel like, look, when she's in class, I mean, her technique is flawless. When she gets on stage, she does, she just lets it all go and goes for it. So you're going to see a very different approach to this role, and I'm curious to see what you all think of this. Let's hear that music again. Already in a big back band there. Just coming along. Slow the way. way. But notice those feet stay, stay crossed, y'all. I think that's, that's important. important. I just want to lean with the back, back leg. Lean with the back, back leg. Ooh, she just stopped cold. Did you see that? Look at her. She's a much more compact dancer than that. She just, she just explodes. Look, Look at, at that. that. I mean, this, this is an, an actress. actress. Yes. <sighs> she is taking it all in, in y'all. She's not wasting a single last breath of her life. Still alive. Yes, still alive. Yes, still alive. Look, Look at that. She's letting, letting her hyperextension go. Letting let it all go. go. Bam! Look at that foot! Yep, yep. but it was, it was a tiny little arabesque. Tiny little arabesque. This is very different from what the others have done. Look at that. Flat, flat, flat. flat. And oh, she's not afraid to get messy, you guys. And I love that because it's from an intentional place. Because she's in the story. Look at that. Oh, she got a full contraction there, people! Contraction! Oh! Yes. Again, Again, not, not going above 90, 90 yet. yet. Oops, she can turn that blue ray from a parallel into a fifth, fifth, and then she's going to go. Okay, let's see what she does. What, what is she going to do? On the last edge. She's lifted up. She's lifted up. That just taking it all in. This is a swan who is living with four and a half. Wait, look at that. She just, like she said, she grabbed the floor. She didn't. She's going to lose her balance. Doesn't give up. Oh, she let those arms go. She just let them go. Oh, you guys. Look at her. Just dying. Remember to keep that core. You want to pull something off like that? A lot harder than it looks, y'all. Oh. Reaching out, reaching out, where, where? Oh, I need to have this. Look at that. Just look at that. Just let her arms just go and she's shaking it a little bit. Got that trimmer to that. Look at that. She's letting everything. Oh! Did you see that? She just... Wow! Really went for that last like, pow! Now you gotta also wonder, right? How big is the stage that she's on? And how big is the audience that she is dancing to? Because we're looking at it up close and we might go, that's a little melodramatic, but not if it's one of those huge stages in Russia where like, you know what I mean? Seriously, so think about that as well. How dramatic do you want to get? How big do you want to go? How big is your stage? How big is your audience? And it's so exciting. There's, there's so many different ways to do this. That's what I want you guys to see. All right. Now, for this video, again, uh, this artist took the original footage of Anna Pavlova. Anna Pavlova. And again, if you don't know who Anna Pavlova is, you should. But what I love is that this artist took the piece that, because you see it when you see the recording, usually the music's way too fast because... The, Film was way too fast because that's what they did. So he, he or she, they slowed it down and then put their own piano music to it. Um, so I want to give credit where credit is due. Um, this, this video is not monetized, right? So let's take a look. Oh my God. So this is the original, original, you guys. And again, I want you to watch and see. One of the things about Anna Pavlova, remember, what made her exciting is that she wasn't concerned about technique as much as she was the feeling of the ballet. And, and I can, I can you, you can say, say oh, but everyone cares about, about technique more now. now. That's, That's fine, fine, but you know, 
There is such a thing as being a trailblazer. And maybe you're the next trailblazer to make ballet more of an art and a little less of just a sport. Just... Okay, let's check this out. Very much, Natalia was channeling this in her work. Oops, it is. Oh, that back bend. Look, Look at that, that guys. You can do that. that. She's getting up. Anyways. Can you believe they used to make fun of Anna for her super flexy arched feet and long legs? Because that was not the style back then. I'm just like, I don't know. She's also, also just in her own world. world. Look at that. Oh, that, that fall. Oh. Oh. She's, She's struggling. struggling. She's letting, letting herself struggle. struggle. She's letting, letting the swan struggle. struggle. Because it is a tight swan. Remember, just because you're dying doesn't mean you stop, stop fighting. fighting. Look, Look, I love that. that. She's covering herself with her wing. wing. And then she just... Raises yourself. Again, Again, if you, if you think, think if you, you watch, watch, go watch swans and ponds. Go watch any birds in the pond. Oh. And she just collapses. Look at that. Oh, this is much more. Yes. That, that is, is really, really hard, hard to, to do, do by, by the way. Let's, Let's see you hit a Susu and hold that back, back bend for a second. It's, it's not, not easy, easy, people. Oh, she goes to the side. Oh, that head, head again. again. You see, you have a lot of opportunities. She's going forward. forward. Look, Look at that. that. That's new. In, in a parallel. Let her see the falls. Look at that. Look at that. Pianists are beautiful. beautiful. They're really honoring her work. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, reaching, reaching out. Yeah. You know, we can, can see when Natalia got her inspiration. Hey, y'all. Fresh out. Not that the, the others, others did. did it. But, but I feel like I suppose the interpretation is a lot closer to this. Just that feeling again. Look, look, look at that. Just lets her arms go. Dying is not for the faint of heart. Dying, Dying is not beautiful. beautiful. It, it is, is painful. painful and... Wow. Wow. Oh. There you go, you guys. So, let's now talk about the next part. All right. So, next is taking inspiration from your story. So something I like to do is write down my own personal biography, uh, things that I have in common with the character, and then things that I don't have in common with the character. It's important to kind of notice those things. So for instance, with the dying swan, uh, I'm not currently dying, so I can't necessarily directly relate to that. But have parts of my life died? Yeah. Like my ballet career. That died. I had to mourn that. I'm still mourning it some days. Uh, my parents died in different ways at different times and so there's that that I'm mourning uh you know what is it as far as the dying swan what are the things that you're feeling sad about or that you're having to let go of or that you know you, you can look at the just look at the meaning of death and what that means to you and then I also recommend this now there's different ways to approach this role and actors will do this with their character roles and uh, I subscribe to the Ivana Chubbuck method, and Ivana Chubbuck, of course, was inspired by Uta Hagen and Stanislavski, and she may disagree with me on that, but um, the question is, are you a victim or are you a hero? And you'll see sometimes actors play into that victim mentality and that victim role, and it's still a good performance, but it's weaker. And when I say weaker, I don't mean vulnerable. I mean, it doesn't hit as strong because in... It, Let's face it, in all of our own lives, we are the heroes of our own story, you know? And we're fighting for something. Even the worst villain is fighting for something they believe in. In their minds, they're not the wahaha, the villain, they're the hero of their own story. And if you have something you're fighting for, 
that just makes the character role so much more powerful. So you'll notice again, right, in those performances, like for me, I feel like I feel like Natalia Osipova was really fighting until the very end. I, I feel like Pavlova was. I think mean, they all have their own way, but I like that. That that excites me. And so even though this this swan is dying, they still have so much life they want to live, right? So think about that. Play with it. It doesn't mean that you know. Again. You may not win the day. You, obviously, ultimately, this swan dies. Although, again, if we looked at um, uh, Lopatkina's performance, she had that final look where she's looking up and still, you know, reaching for something. So use that in your work and make your choices accordingly. You can look at your own personal life. Now, if you're not comfortable with using your own personal life, you can go more uh, the Meisner technique where, you know, you're just thinking, doing a little more what if. You could use the approach of just more of a what if. What would it be like if I truly was dying? What would it be like to be a swan? What would it be like? And you can play with that. I really like when certain dancers bring in uh, an, an, an animal movement, an animal quality. I think Svetlana Zakharva does a lot of those kind of those little bird like movements right in in their work when they're, you know, they're they're preening, they're they're tilting their heads. You can do a lot of great work just studying watching birds. I think that's what Anna Pavlova was doing, was watching the birds, watching the swans at the park. So use that too. You can bring in little bits of that. One of the things that my jazz teacher, my jazz mentor, Rick Atwell, used to say every time we were in class was, remember, who am I, where am I, and why am I dancing? And that's personal to you. You don't have to tell anybody about your process. That can be personal to you. Even if someone says, what did you do to prepare for this role? You can choose what you want to share and what you want to keep personal, right? Like a magician, you, you know, maybe you don't want to tell them all the tricks. It's fine. So that's a little bit about using your story. Okay, last thing. Some, some comments about technique and some tips, right? So I've put in the, in the uh, description box below a couple of links to some videos. One is uh, working on swan arms for the salty sugar plum. One is about doing berets and how to improve your berets by Catherine Morgan. You wanna do, um, you know, really the arms and the back you want to work on developing your arms and back. Now, this is a lifelong pursuit, okay? And the main thing I want to say to you guys is this. Whatever you do to improve your technique with your arms, your back, your berets, strengthening your core, uh, because it's all about having a strong core in order to free up the rest of your body to move, this is a lifelong pursuit. Did I already say that? I'm saying it again. But more importantly, for me, I say, only pursue the technique as far as it'll take you where it won't detract from your emotional and stylistic performance, okay? Because to me, if you're too focused on the technique, then you're not living in the moment as the dying swan. And I feel that takes away from the performance. Now, here's what's great. You guys want in on a little secret? The great thing about this solo is the music is so beautiful that even the worst performance is enjoyable. And I mean it because the audience can always just close their eyes and listen to the music. They can fill in their own blanks. You know, it's kind of like, you know, in movies where they have great music and the actor is just standing there in front of the camera with a blank look on their face. The audience fills in their own stories, right? That's that's a, one of those things. And so you can kind of rest knowing that and relax kind of a little bit that the music is so beautiful, whether or not you mess up, they're going to be so enthralled by this beautiful music. And, and it's called the dying swan, for God's sake. They're going to be thinking about their own parents dying, their own mortality, all of that. They'll be looking, maybe if you've just got beautiful technique and you really don't have any feeling, most of the audience is just going to enjoy looking at a pretty ballerina in a swan costume. Great. But if you want to take your performance to the next level, remember that video of Anna Pavlova. My God, it's not about technique. Not to me, at least. It's about becoming this character, becoming this role, dancing in this moment. It's such an amazing opportunity. I'm going to cry again. Good Lord. Um, I do have a link to my Dying Swan performance in 2016. I'll, I should do a separate video of me critiquing myself because I have some notes, y'all. But also as I watched it, again, the music is so beautiful that I watched myself in 2016 and thought, look at you, Georgia. Look at you performing this role again. What an amazing, unique opportunity. 
I felt humbled. I felt grateful. I think anytime we get to perform this, this solo, we can be grateful to get the opportunity to do that, to share this beautiful historic piece with an audience. So I hope that these tips and tricks helped. And uh, I hope that to the, the fan who uh, asked for this video, I hope this video helps you. If you decide to share a clip of your performance, I'd love to see it, whether online or you know, uh, offline, whatever you do. But I wish you the very best for your performance and for anyone else out there interested in performing this role, be sure you understand your history, understand the requirements around your particular performance, uh, do your research, come from your own story, get inspired, work on your technique, but then at the, in the end, when you're ready to go on stage, whew, let it go and dance in the moment. You've been watching Ballerina Badass. My name is Georgia Reed. Never give up, never stop dancing. Unless, of course, you need to take a break. It's all good. I love you all. Toy, toy, toy.